British were our allies, so their enemies, the Delaware, must be stopped. But I knew better than to spill the blood of the Seneca, the blood of the Six Nations. I would not be the one to break the great peace. It was our custom to take as prisoners the men and women we captured, but it was never a custom that sat right with me. And there in the Delaware village, I found a woman who would change my feelings about that custom. my people. Our mothers have taught us to bring into our homes those we capture, bring them into our lives, have them come as one with our nations, share our home fires. It is hard for you what our ancient mothers have given us. I see that. I want you to be happy. I want to make you happy. I want that more than I can find words to speak. Seneca's there, so none were killed. The great peace has not been broken. We did as the British asked and punished their enemies, the Delaware. Then we looked to Sir William and the British to keep their side of the promise, to stop their settlers from taking our precious land. As the years slipped by, we could only hope that the peace would continue. Get us some red meat. Let him go! 
I want to find out where he goes. No. Go. 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 Take the set. Redkins! Redkins! They got Abner and Tom! They killed him! I've come to offer the condolences of the Great Father and all his children. Chief Seth was a, a wise leader. Sit down. My husband was killed by white squatters on our own hunting grounds. Despite the royal proclamation, the one that you said would prohibit him forever from settling across the great mountains. Mother Cassina, I have reported his death to General Gage. He'll do nothing. Why don't your English lords enforce that treaty? Trouble in the colonies. So all the general sends his muskets to Boston and other places. He has no idea where it will end. That's his concern. It is also mine. But you tell me. Do you find justice in the colonist or the English taking away the land? Mother Gashina, I'm here trying to keep two worlds from colliding, but they will collide, I can assure you. And what can your people do? Nothing. The proclamation is just a, a statement. It is not a treaty line. Where do the great mountains end exactly, Mother? Yes, the people know, but the colonists don't. It is not on paper. We have belonged to this land since the beginning. Your verbal claims mean nothing to the white man. You must do it their way. You've asked me to establish a, a treaty line which will officially add teeth to the proclamation. Another treaty which will require more concessions of land. But protection for all the Iroquois nations. I think we know too well your protection, Great Father. 
I don't deserve to be treated like your enemy. I've always had your best interest in my heart. Have you no loyalty in return? My loyalty is where it has always been. With the people. As is mine. My children are of your people, but they grow in a new world, mother. And only those who can survive in it will grow stronger. Nothing will be handed to us here. Nothing comes easy. It is a fierce fight. And I used to think you were our fighter. Oh, Johnson, see what you have become. Just go. Go! From there to the Ohio River, at the mouth of the Tennessee, then to Fort Pitt, then along the Allegheny to Kitanning. I beg you, I beg you to hear me in the name of Mother Kashina, who was too ill to speak for herself. This is a treaty which many of our people wish to have. A treaty. A treaty that, that separates us from the land, from the Delaware, to the Onondaga, to Wood Run, almost as far as Fort Stanwix. That is land. That is land we do not even claim to own. It was given to us by the Creator, land for us to nurture, so that it might give us life. I can do that, Grandma. <sighs> Just follow the word with the great peace. That's all that you can do. The Six Nations must not be divided. They must stand together. I wish, I wish I had not lived in these times. He went into the forest. He seemed... Oh, oh, I've never seen him that way. Stay with her. See to the children.
Wake up. Wake up. Wake up! The time is near when the people of the Longhouse will regain everything that we have lost. All of the lands that have been sold or, or bartered away or stolen, spoiled so there was no more life in the earth. How did you come by this belief? A vision. A very powerful vision brought to me by the Peacemaker. Oh, I know. For you, truth lies in, in solid things. A uh, musket. A suit of fine English clothes. And books full of their words and accountings of their gold. Don't tell me what my truth is. Just because I take some things from the white man's world, it doesn't change my heart. I'm still Tayondenega. I own the Nega. There will be a war between the colonies and the Great Father. That was in your vision? If the people of the Longhouse stand apart in this war, the colonists and the British will bleed each other to death. That won't happen. If there is a war, the British will win. And what difference does that make to us? The white man, any white man, is like a... A serpent with a big belly that eats everything in his path. He will destroy us if we don't force him out of the land. If that is what you saw in your vision, I don't believe it came from the peacemaker. <laughs> Wait and see. Tayona Nega, you and I weren't born to be enemies. We were born to be brothers. That was also in your vision? Hmm. That's in my heart. Step forward, Loha. Make your pledge to the clan mothers and the chiefs of the Confederacy. I will live in accordance with the laws of the great peace and exercise judgment in all affairs. Brothers, receive these strings of wampum as evidence of his pledge. We now place upon you the sacred emblem of the deer's antlers. You are now a chief and a servant of the people. The Adawa and the Shani have taken up their hatchets once again. More innocent blood has been let on the banks of the Ohio with each passing day. Season after season, more white settlers cross the great mountains in search of land. Our land. Age and failing health weighed heavily on Sir William Johnson. But since Sir William was powerless to stop the white invasion, Luhahio came to see him as an enemy. To cast from among you these foolish voices of discontent. The great father has been patient with his children. But, here now. He accuses me. I do accuse you, Loha Hio. No, William Johnson, I accuse you. Do you think that this bloodshed in the West is a, is a thing I can raise at my command? Like starting a cooking fire in the forest. No. This killing rises up out of the earth, out of the forests and rivers of our lands because of what you are doing to the people of the Longhouse. What did you think would happen 
After you gave us the treaty at Fort Stanwix, you knew the white settlers would not stay within the treaty boundaries. You knew it would mean more killing, and you knew that the white squatters would cry for punishment, and those cries would become demands for more lands yet! Oh. And knowing all this, you still summoned the chiefs of the Great Council to your house and mouth these empty words and accusations! <laughs> Uncle! <laughs> Uncle! Joseph. Joseph. I've always been a friend of the people. Always. You must take control now. You must guide them. He taught me the fine ways of the British, and he sought to protect the confederacy of the Six Nations. I mourned his loss, and feared what the future would bring. Oh, Hajillo, your words destroyed him. I meant them to. He was our friend. Now who do the people have to be such a friend? The women fear more pain will come without him. I'm afraid too. In the sacred words of the peace, it says that in a time of great trouble, the peacemaker will come again to save the people. But you are not the peacemaker. No, I am Loha Hio. The peacemaker did not say under what name he would come. There would be a war between the British and the colonists. And as before with the British and the French, the Six Nations would be pulled in two directions. I believed we could only side with the powerful British, but we had to wait for the clan mothers to have their say. Those are the Oneida. You do well, Peggy. You know all the nations of the Iroquois now. And that fierce and haughty man, he is the Oneida chief? He is Red Wolf, the leader of their war party. He wants the Six Nations to fight on the side of the rebel colonists. And you, Thayandanega, always want the people to fight on the side of the British. And how are you thinking, Loha Hio? Perhaps I am thinking in the middle. Come, we must join the council. Mother Catherine, I have come from the great council of the chiefs of the Six Nations. To hear the wisdom of the clan mothers. The clan mothers have come to a sense of the people. And we ask you, Tayon Denega, to carry our word to the Great Council. First, on the invitation of the colonists to our chiefs to come to Philadelphia, the place of the colonial's revolution. We find no harm in sending such a delegation. But enter into no alliances without the consent of all the people. I think it will do harm. The rebels want you to go to Philadelphia for one reason. Of course, to enlist us against the British. What we do, what we let them think we're going to do are very different things. We must ally ourselves with the British. Now! Well, we know that they need us. And when they no longer need us again, as they no longer needed us after we helped them conquer the French... Listen to me. I have a letter from my old teacher. Listen! He talks of this army of rebel colonists. They are sometimes little more than a rabble. Farmers, shopkeepers, old men and boys. Unorganized, poorly led by men with no professional experience. Some of them with weapons as old as this gout-ridden foot of mine. That is going to win your great war with the British? Joseph, just tell me one thing. What is this gout? <laughs> you laugh. You cling to your vision and you laugh. 
You must not go to war on the side of the British. You told me once that a man of the people is a free man, and he may fight with or against whom he chooses. Trust me. of the Six Nations, Americans. Our colony of Massachusetts has been invaded by British troops. Her people shot, her houses burned. We have more in common with you than you might think. I have long sought to incorporate the principles of your Confederacy into a plan for a union among the colonies. Most important of all, individual freedom and a great council in which no one voice speaks with total authority. More than once, I have used your symbol for strength in unity of bound arrows to sway my brothers. I hope my words were well received. We are much aware we must have the friendship of the Six Nations if our purposes in opposing the Crown are to be achieved. Your words were good. Good. Then perhaps we can speak more later. Well done, Franklin. You do know your savages. Thank you. They were good words, smooth words, like winter ice on a large pond. But smooth words won't stop them and the British from bleeding each other to death. for the birth of our first child. I was filled with excitement, but time stood still as my beloved Peggy struggled. <laughs> yes, it's going to be over soon. Where the colonies has begun. Trust me, Joseph, it'll be over in a year. The Royal Navy has blockaded their parts. Once we isolate Washington's army between our forces coming down from the north. If all goes as planned. It will, Joseph. I promise. And Joseph, I am going to commission you as an officer in the army of our glorious monarch, King George III. I was proud to be a captain in the British Army. I led my men, both red and white alike, as a Mohawk war chief and an English officer. I was a man like no other in the British Army, and I felt we must win this war to save my people. Sego! Sego! It's gonna go, Aga. 
I didn't think you'd accept an invitation from the British. I came here to listen. I listen very well. Lego. Your neutrality is wearing thin with the Oneida. Yes. Some of them sympathize with the rebels. Some of them even fight on their side, even though we have warned them of the danger of dividing the longhouse. Even as I tried to warn you. Joseph, would it have been so hard to wait? For what? For your vision to come to pass? We will win this war in six months. We? Oui. The British, then. Look. General Howe is coming up the Hudson from New York, and we march west. We'll take Fort Stanwix in a week. And when we all meet at Albany, we'll crack the rebels like a nut. Good. With all that force, they won't need the hatchets of the Six Nations. And where will that leave the Six Nations when it's all over? What will your precious neutrality do to the people then? You told me once. You believed that we were meant to be brothers. Not enemies. Lohahio, look at me. As your brother, I ask you to come with us. Not fight. You don't have to fight yet. Only be with us. I'll sleep with your words tonight. Perhaps our answer will come in my dreams. I like your haircut, brother. Hmm. <laughs> Keep that pedal away from the fire. Oh. No, I heal. Wake up. Come outside. What is it? A relief force of the rebel colonists is coming up from the south. Hundreds of them. We must stop them. We did not come here to fight. No? Well, now the fight is coming to you. No, I heal. How many women and children are with you? We don't have time to get them out. The rebels will count everybody here as an enemy. We must stop them. All right, Joseph. One fight.
Mohahio was right. We had warred upon our Iroquois brothers, and the great peace had been broken. But this killing came because of the white man, and I was consumed with avenging Lohahio's death. And so I put the colonial settlements to the torch, from Ariskine to the Susquehanna, Wyoming Valley, Andrews Town, German Flats. I became known as the Monster Brant, the best fighting weapon the British had. And where I left destruction and terror in my wake, the colonists grew angrier and stronger. They destroyed my people's villages and burned our sacred longhouses. And in the end, they were too strong. And the fire was turned against us fourfold. And my beloved British were nowhere to be found. Come on, Joss! They all went to strike. Bloody damn colonists sacked and burned. We saved the house, Joss. Molly fought the fires. She was magnificent. She's inside. But Joseph, she's... Ah, uh, more water, you idiots! Where are the rest of the slaves? Did they run off? This is what our love for the British has brought us. Fire and destruction. The worst. The worst is just beginning. The British betrayed our trust. We fought the French and the colonists for them. But they didn't keep their side of the covenant. Where are they now? When they burn our homes, our cornfields. And so it happened, ripped apart by two mighty forces. The great peace of the Confederacy of the Six Nations was broken, and the prophecy of the peacemaker was fulfilled. We were reduced to poverty and despair. The British Kingdom took much from us. And we were wrong to allow it. But the colonial government hasn't left us anything either. Just small pieces of land to the west. They have devoured our earth. Ohahio was right. He warned us. He would have found us a way to the great peace. But I... I bear full responsibility. For these great ruins. Yes, you do. As do our fathers. And theirs before them. All the way back to the chiefs who welcomed the first white traders into our midst. And then those later who traded the first pieces of land for Metal hoes, and knives, and liquor. But Joseph, even your shoulders aren't big enough to bear all the responsibility. There are those of us who would divide our ancient sacred fire and carry it to Canada, where we can find a future for our people. We have brothers there. We could rebuild our longhouses there. How many will join me to carry our half of the fire in search of a new home? Lead us. Tie on the Nega. Lead us to 
to Canada. The great peace was shaken. Our Grand Council nearly destroyed. I thought it was right to honor the treaties we made with the British. But in the end, I was wrong. My people and I divided the ceremonial wampum belts and sacred council fire. As we turned our faces to Canada, we left behind a new nation, the United States of America. A nation that was created in our image and that was paid for with the blood of the Iroquois people. But the people of the Longhouse will survive as long as we keep the tree of peace growing and the spirit of the council fire bright. For it is a spirit and a fire that must never be allowed to die. And as long as the people believe in it, they shall live on through all the ages, and they shall have the sanction of the holder of the heavens forever. Joseph Brandt led his followers to Canada, arriving in 1785 and settling in what is now the province of Ontario. He died on November 24th, 1807, at the age of 64. In modern times, the central fire has been rekindled at Onondaga Lake in central New York State, where the Six Nations regularly gather to guide the affairs of their people. The Iroquois have preserved their traditional way of life by passing the customs and ways of the ancestors down through the generations. To this day, the people of the Longhouse remain united in the spirit of the Great Peace.